Now let's move on to the next submitted item. How do I create and link from a knowledge library document? Well, first it's necessary to create your knowledge library content. And this process is almost identical to creating a case view document for a client file with only a couple minor differences. First of all, header, footer, carry forward, autocopy, and freeze areas are not placed in the knowledge library document. Their content is created in the main body of the case view knowledge library document instead. We cannot pull from a freeze pane into a client document. We can't pull from a header or a footer field into a client header or footer field, but we can pull from the body of the knowledge library document into those spaces in a client file. To create a new knowledge library document in case view, we select file and choose new knowledge library. And most of you should recognize at this point it looks exactly like a new blank case view document because that is exactly what it is. However, this document is not associated with any particular client file and if I were to save it, I go file save and it asks me first if I want it to become part of a knowledge library index which is a little bit beyond the scope of what I'm going to talk about today. So I'm going to say no here and then it's going to ask me where I'd like to put this and I put it into my default knowledge library folder and provide an appropriate name. Now, as we look at this, you can see that I actually have a caseware zone knowledge library already created. So I'm going to cancel this without saving this particular knowledge library document. To open a knowledge library document, I can select File, Open Knowledge Library, and then choose the knowledge library document I'd like to open. This gives me access to see my knowledge library content and edit that content if it's necessary. Also, in the design mode, note that in my knowledge library document I've labeled sections around each area. So if I move to the left hand side in the style window, I've got a labeled section called freeze here. And If I right click and hit modify, we can see the section properties and I've got my label here for freeze. Now, the section properties tie prominently into the knowledge library linkages because we need to have that information. It's the document path, file name, and section label we need to be able to pull the content from the knowledge library into a template document that can be copied then to client files and updated directly by changes made in the knowledge library document. So in this particular section in my knowledge library document, I've labeled it freeze and we do have the ability to include in the list of bookmarks, separate display labels. We can put a description in here as well for the developer. And down at the bottom with our knowledge library entry, we can include the section in the comparisons to ensure that if something changes, we can compare and update our current document from the knowledge library updated content. We can choose to apply styles after the knowledge library update or prior to the knowledge library update. After is, uh, pardon me, prior to is the default which will maintain the styles from the client document. After will bring in the styles from the knowledge library. You can also allow paragraphs that are modifiable in form mode to be reverted back to their original content. Any diagnostics that are applicable to that section can be maintained and pulled through as well as any rounding relations that may have been set up previously. Now, each of my sections in this document has a section label. I've added some fuchsia block paragraphs here just to make it easier to see each of the different areas in my knowledge library document when I'm editing it. And if I had tagged those, I could have jumped to the appropriate tags to get that information. Now, I've started bringing in knowledge library links to a document in my file already. So document two, link from knowledge library document. I'm going to first show you how to manually insert a section from a knowledge library. And then, using the cells that you see up at the top, I'm going to show you how we can automate that to make it available to staff without forcing them to go into the design mode, allowing them to do this from the form mode so that you can control your structure without breaking the content and the underlying structure of your document. Let's start off by going into the design mode and I'm just going to place my cursor up at the top here. Move that, let me do that. I'll move it down to the bottom. Okay. So if I wanted to insert new knowledge library content into this 
document at this position manually, I would go to the insert menu and select knowledge library link. Here I would then browse to the directory where my document is located and select the document to open it. That will then open up a drop down list of my section labels. So let's say that I wanted to bring in the notes to the financial statements. Now this particular section includes all of the notes that you see underneath that. So I'm going to bring that in. We have the ability to compare our differences or automatically update when they're different. We can ask the user if they want to save their input values or always save or discard them. We're going to copy the section label into this section, allow deletion of the link and update immediately, which means it will bring the content in as soon as I click the OK button. If it can't find the library name, we can prompt the user for a new file name, ask them to remove it, and we can also leave the current content or remove the current content. Similarly, if we can't file the set, find the section label, we can prompt the user for a new label, ask to remove it, leave it, or remove the content. So I've got it all set, and when I click OK, it brings in that information. Now, if you look at the section marker to the left-hand side, the section marker, although it's difficult to see, is green and then uh, hover over top of it, it turns red, and if I right click on it, it gives me the ability to modify, resize, delete, select. If I go to modify, we see a new property called Knowledge Library Link, which shows the Knowledge Library file name and the section label that we're connected to, as well as the property selected when we were inserting this Knowledge Library Link. So that's how we would do it manually, and of course this would become part of our template, so that when you create a new file from your template, you have these links set up, and if a change happens, you'll be able to update it. I'm going to show you a change momentarily, but I've also taken the liberty of already bringing in the title page and the table of contents, and in my freeze pane, I've created a cell to put the knowledge library document path and name, a button that's going to take the uh, pick file dialog and put it into the input cell here and another two buttons. The insert button is going to read the file path cell to insert a knowledge library link and it's going to show me only the knowledge libraries that have been not yet inserted into the document and it will insert it at an insertion point that has been tagged insert here. Now that's just a button cell that I've created and added that particular event to it. If I scroll down in the body of my document, you can see that I've got this paragraph with a tag on it, and that tag happens to be the insert here tag. To tag a paragraph, I went to the format menu, selected paragraph, and I selected the tag properties to fill in the paragraph tag information. So all that tied together is going to allow me to automate the insertion. In the form mode, I select the button to browse for my library, hit the open, and we see the path and file name of my library document. Then when I click on the insert button, it asks me what I would like to insert. Well, I'm going to pull in the balance sheet, statement of income, statement of retained earnings, statement of cash flow, and I already have all of my notes brought in, so I'm not going to worry about any of the notes. I'll just click OK. And that quickly, it has pulled in the information from my knowledge library into my template document. And again, because it's here, when I create a new file from my template, all these links are going to point back to my knowledge library. Now let me click the Save button here, go back to my knowledge library document, and I'm going to change the word on the balance sheet from unaudited to audited and save that in my knowledge library. Now if that happens, back in the main document, we can check to see if we're up to date by going to the tools menu and choosing to compare our document to the knowledge library links at their source. This is going to show me what's different in the documents and then we can compare them to see what the differences are and move to the next section. Mine right up there, let's do that and compare this one. And here we can see the difference, unaudited and audited. So I want to replace my document content 
with the information coming from my knowledge library. So I just click the replace button here. And it's asking me if I'd like to keep the enter data for input cells and paragraphs. I'm going to say yes because I like all that input information. I don't want to lose it. And then I can close the compare dialog. No other differences are being shown. So I'll close this as well. And if we go up to the heading, it now in my document says audited instead of unaudited. And that's how we can keep all of our client files up to date running from a standard knowledge library. And rather than having to make an individual change in each client file, we can change it at the library level and then just do a comparison to the links and update our file.